Now, live on WPRI 12 and on WPRI.com, this is Eyewitness News at 11. Coverage you can count on. A fatal crash in Coventry tonight. We hear from a woman who stayed with the victim until help arrived. Plus. It's been a great day. We went to the um, Mercedes-Benz Stadium and we um, went to the field. We actually were able to go on it. A Patriots fan battling a rare illness has his wish granted. He gets to watch his favorite team in the big game. First year pinpoint weather 12 forecast. Cold temperatures still having an impact on much of our area, but there is a bit of a warm-up on the way. Chief Meteorologist Tony Petrarca is in the Forecast Center now with more. Tony? Well, Mike and Shannon, still seeing signs of the uh, frigid weather gradually easing and retreating over the weekend, especially the latter part of the weekend. In the meantime, clear, dry, of course, very cold once again. Temperatures in the teens. Skies are clear in Providence right now and all around. Look at the low temps. Actually, the temperatures now, 8 degrees in Smithfield, 14 in Providence, and only 17 in Newport. Looking at Doppler radar, it is dry. Skies are clear, so no precipitation. That's the upside. As cold as it is, we don't have any rain, sleet, or snow. Tomorrow morning, cold starts, sunshine and dry. Starts off at 11 degrees above zero by uh, daybreak, but should recover to near freezing by tomorrow afternoon. So heading in the right direction, and even better by Sunday. The full forecast coming up in a little bit. Thank you, Tony. Our New England Nation big game coverage continues now. The Patriots held their final practice of the week today as we head less than 48 hours away from the Pats and Rams taking the field in Atlanta for Super Bowl 53. I feel like we've been waiting forever. Yes. Tonight we introduce you to a family whose wish came true. They are at the big game. Plus, we hear from Patriots head coach Bill Belichick and his son about growing up in a football family. Sports director Yanni Karakas and Ruthie Polinski joins us now live from Atlanta with more. Hi, guys. Hey, Mike and Shannon, and you know what? Bill Belichick's been in a good mood Such a all good week. Mood. And Characteristically so. Yeah, I think with two weeks of the Super Bowl, he can really enjoy it. And he spoke at great length of growing up in a football family. His dad, of course, was an assistant at the Naval Academy. Bill Belichick with a playbook in his crib and with a headset next to his toy footballs. And now he's passing on that love for football and coaching to his sons, both of whom were on his staff. Growing up a Belichick means family vacations to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Forget Disney World. Again, the Hall of Fame was, a, was an annual trip for us. That was part of the, uh, we went to Hiram, where the Cleveland Browns uh, practiced. Uh, Paul Brown, the Cleveland Browns, I mean, all that was just, that's, that's how I grew up. So, um, and I've always enjoyed it. I've always been interested in it. And that enjoyment of football's history, he passed down to his own children, including his older son and now assistant coach, Stephen. Did you guys go to Canton when you were a kid? Yeah, yeah, I went to, uh, we went to Canton a couple times when we lived in, out in Cleveland. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, we're a football family, so we got good and bad memories in, in the football world. Uh, been going on since I was in my mom's stomach when they won the Super Bowl back in 87. Now, to be fair, the Belichicks also went to Disney World. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, we, we go to Disney World as a family. Yeah, we've taken plenty of family trips. If the Patriots win, Bill Belichick could go to Disney World probably for free, right? You would think so. I yeah. think he should probably be able to go most places for free. And Yanni, here on WPRI 12, we've been following the story of, of Rhode Island's Adam Arif, who was granted his wish through the Make-A-Wish Foundation back in November. He found out that he was going to go to the big game. But little did he know, his team would be playing in their biggest game of the year. Adam Arif suffers from a rare disorder, Duchenne muscular dystrophy. It's progressive, irreversible, with no known cure. Thanks to Rhode Island and Massachusetts Make-A-Wish Foundation and their amazing partnership with the NFL, Adam was granted his wish and is here in Atlanta to attend Super Bowl 53. But that's not all. It's been a great day. We went to the um, Mercedes-Benz Stadium and we... Um Went to the field, we actually were able to go on it. Adam would have loved being at the Super Bowl regardless of who was playing. But here he is with the Patriots, his favorite team. You never thought you would be here and you know it's just great that Make a Wish is sending, you know, me and a bunch of other kids here. I hope to see a victory. Adam has just not stopped smiling since he got here, and he knew that he was coming to the Super Bowl, but the NFL and Make-A-Wish just kind of really took it over the top. I took a picture of Steve Smith. <laughs> yeah. How is that? It's a lot of fun. I didn't expect him to come up to me, honestly. Adam is a true Patriots fanatic, but like many, he had his doubts this year. It turns out that, you know, a coach and a quarterback can really do a lot for a team, and 
get them, you know, back to the Super Bowl, you know, three years straight. And Yanni, Adam's mom told me that during their tour of Mercedes-Benz Stadium today, they were actually allowed to go onto the field and they raced from the 50-yard line to the end zone. When they got into the end zone, they were painting it and they asked if this was going to be the Patriots end zone. They said yes, and they think that's a good luck charm for New England on Sunday. I like that. And coming up in sports, we'll have the sights and sounds from Patriots practice as the team prepares for these final hours before kickoff. We're live tonight in Atlanta with Ruthie Polinski. I'm Yanni Karakis, Eyewitness News. And many Patriots fans are gearing up for the big game on Sunday, making sure they're set to cheer on the Pats against the Rams. But one super fan from right here in Rhode Island is continuing his decades-long tradition of going to the Super Bowl. Iowa News reporter Alexandra Leslie caught up with him ahead of his 33rd straight trip to the big game. Aram Garabedian isn't just a Patriots fan, he's a big football fan in general. It's why he's made it a tradition to go to the big game 33 years in a row. So I just kept going and going and going and going and going. This Sunday, 83-year-old Aram Garabedian is keeping up with a decades-old tradition, going to the Super Bowl. I caught up with him before he flew out of TF Green Airport Friday. This is my outfit for the weekend. I usually go in a lot of beads and stuff like that. The part owner of the Warwick Mall isn't shy about his love for football. Oh, I got my tickets all here from the previous Super Bowls. The season ticket holder says he goes to games with family often, but they don't always get to tag along to the big game. With my uncle, yes. I wanted at least just one in this she lifetime. Said, uncle, I've got to, I got to go to one Super Bowl in my life, so she's going. This Sunday, Aram will be going to his 33rd Super Bowl. Go Pats. That's why I put it on this hat. While he's been fortunate enough to get tickets, he says it didn't always mean front row seats. I've also been two rows from being outside the stadium in the years I've been going. <laughs> I was so high, you needed an oxygen help up there, but I kind of moving down into the seating. Aram says despite needing some more help to get around, he doesn't plan on stopping anytime soon. Oh, I am happy, and boy, I'm telling you, I'm excited. And this won't be the first Super Bowl in Atlanta. The city previously hosted two games inside the Georgia Dome, but this will be the first inside the new Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Reporting in Warwick, I'm Alexandra Leslie, Eyewitness News. And the Foxborough Fire Department showing their support for the Patriots. The department posted this photo in a tweet that read, Let's go. And for the record, no, it never gets old. And there's just as much buzz and excitement for yet another Super Bowl. Don't believe the haters. Our New England Nation coverage continues tomorrow night right here on WPR at 12 at 7 with our New England Nation preview show as we take an in-depth look at the big game between the Pats and Rams. And the only place to watch Super Bowl 53 is right here on WPRI 12 Sunday night at 640. And we have more in-depth coverage of the big game. While the Pats have been to plenty of Super Bowls, this will be the first time that people can legally place bets on the big game here in Rhode Island. Twin River is gearing up for a busy weekend, saying they've seen people coming from all over New England and beyond to place their bets. This weekend could also help the state budget. Sports betting so far has just brought in modest revenue since it launched back in November. Yeah, the program has been in existence for about six weeks, so we are still, relatively speaking, early on. I think the expectation is that the Super Bowl will be bringing out a lot of folks. Twin River is extending its hours this weekend so people can place bets and cash in their tickets after the game on Sunday. Right now, you can only bet in person on site at Twin River's two casinos. Switching now to a horrific crash tonight we, that claimed the life of a local woman. A car struck a telephone pole in the area of Washington Street in Coventry last night, killing the passenger and landing the driver in handcuffs. Eyewitness News reporter Sheena Loshuto spoke to a woman who stayed with the victim until help arrived. She joins us now live in Coventry. Sheena. Well, it's a very sad situation for everybody involved. There were two young girls in that car, and I actually did speak with the victim's family at the scene earlier tonight. They are in too much pain to talk with us on camera, but however, they want everybody to know they are not blaming the driver. Reality sets in for a local family after 21-year-old Caitlin Holroyd dies after a car crash. A memorial is found on Washington Street at the scene. The car crashed into a pole here. Crews have since replaced it. I feel terrible for the family. Authorities believe speed was a factor and continue investigating what exactly happened. The driver, Brianna Soro of West Warwick, is being charged with driving to endanger death resulting. 
The two girls were best friends. All we heard was a boom, so I wasn't really sure what was going on at first, and it, it didn't even really look like a car. This woman named Linda did not want her face shown on television. She was across the street at her brother's house. They both rushed, trying to help, describing the scene as one big smoky blur. Once the ambulance came and they took over, I kind of had to collect myself and I went back in my brother's. This is the car towed from the scene, now at the Coventry Police Department. The damage to the front is clear. Trying to cope with the tragedy, Caitlin's family members say they aren't blaming the driver. It is really sad just to see these kids. It doesn't have to happen. Now the crash remains under investigation tonight. The driver will answer to those charges in court next week. Reporting live in Coventry tonight, I'm Sheena Loshudo, Eyewitness News. Thank you, Sheena. Some developing news out of Providence now, where police are on scene on Adelaide Avenue after reports of shots fired. Our cameras captured a Jeep in the road with two bullet holes in it. It's not clear if anyone was hit. We have calls into police for more information, and we will bring you the latest as soon as we learn it. Fire officials believe a lit cigarette is to blame for a fire here at an apartment complex in Fall River. The Red Cross is now assisting several residents of the Mount Apartments on Middle Street following a fast-moving fire there. Officials say no one was hurt, but three cats were killed in the apartment where the fire started. Two neighboring apartments were also damaged. Kickapoo at Middle School in Warren is expected to reopen Monday after classes were canceled today due to a large teacher sick out. The teachers union tells us it was all over safety concerns. They say unruly student behavior has led to disruptions and, and in some cases injuries. Warren police say they've been called to the school 18 times so far this school year, four of those for students fighting. The school district administration said in a letter to parents today that it had been working with teachers to address the safety concerns. New tonight, Moses Brown School has opened an investigation into a sexual abuse accusation dating back to the 1960s that was recently reported. In a letter to the school community, head of the Moses Brown School, Matt Glenningdon, said former boarding students recently reported he was abused by two teachers. Glendingdon said the Moses Brown alumnus described a series of separate incidents with the two teachers who have not yet been identified. Now, according to Glendingdon, both teachers are dead, but the school is opening an investigation into the former student's report. We have more coverage you can count on coming up next on Eyewitness News at 11 tonight. After the death of two children in Massachusetts, what Rhode Island health officials say you should do to keep your family safe this flu season. Plus, what a group of Navy pilots are doing this weekend to make history.